Hydrocephalus is a neurological condition caused by too much fluid within the brain. As the brain swells with excess fluid, it becomes compressed within the confines of the skull. Brain compression causes neurological symptoms and can lead to death of the surrounding tissue. Symptoms of hydrocephalus can vary according to the degree of which the brain is being compressed and the cause of the fluid buildup. Some pets can live mostly normal lives with the condition while others can suffer with debilitating neurological symptoms. Some of those symptoms include compulsive circling or spinning, a large dome-shaped skull, and a persistent fontanelle or soft spot on the head wide eyes in an abnormal eye position, fixed downwards and outwards, difficulty learning, house training, difficulty drinking and eating, personality and behavior changes, head pressing behavior, inappropriate vocalization, and blindness and seizures. Cerebrospinal fluid surrounds the brain and spinal cord, protecting delicate tissue and providing nutrients. It is produced in the ventricles of the brain and reabsorbed by the body as it completes its necessary functions. However, excess CSF can accumulate in the brain if the flow or absorption of CSF is obstructed or too much CSF is being produced. In pets, obstruction is much more common and there are two basic types, congenital and acquired. And while both outcomes are the same, causes are, are different. In congenital hydrocephalus, this is normally present at birth and often associated with that dome-shaped head and a palpable open fontanelle. Congenital hydrocephalus can be caused by abnormal absorption of the spinal fluid or an inability to move or circulate appropriately. The brain makes spinal fluid at a constant rate, so when it cannot flow appropriately or get reabsorbed appropriately, this causes a backup of fluid. The increase in fluid accumulation causes high pressure within the brain and skull, and thus causes brain dysfunction. Certain pets are predisposed to congenital hydrocephalus, especially toy and brachycephalic breeds, such as Chihuahuas, Yorkshire Terriers, Boston Terriers, Pomeranians, Pekingese, Maltese, and Toy Poodles. The other form of hydrocephalus is acquired hydrocephalus, and this can happen in any breed and at any age. Pets with acquired hydrocephalus are born with normal brains, but develop a blockage that interferes with the flow or absorption of CSF. The most common development is a brain tumor, however there are other possibilities. Some of those possibilities include, as I mentioned, a brain tumor, brain trauma or hemorrhage, a bacterial or viral infection, inflammatory brain disease, vitamin A deficiency, or exposure to certain drugs, chemicals, or toxins. Congenital hydrocephalus can often be recognized just by the distinctive head shape and symptoms. However, a vet will typically order tests to confirm it. Plus, many breeds are predisposed to hydrocephalus and are predisposed to other conditions, so it is important to rule these out. Tests should include physical and neurologic exams, blood and chemistry profiles, blood counts, electrolyte panels, and if indicated, a urinalysis. Once these other conditions are ruled out, MRI and CSF analysis can be used for a definitive diagnosis. MRI is the most reliable and comprehensive method for diagnosing hydrocephalus. Not only can we see the enlarged ventricles, but we can also see what's causing it. In some cases, a spinal tap is performed following an MRI to collect the cerebral spinal fluid and check for signs of infection or inflammation. Treatment of hydrocephalus depends on the severity, type, and the underlying cause. However, in most cases, hydrocephalus is managed and not cured. For mild to moderate hydrocephalus, treatment usually begins with medications. Corticosteroids reduce inflammation and pressure within the brain. Proton pump inhibitors decrease the production of CSF. 
Diuretics, if indicated, can increase the outflow of CSF as well as decreasing its production and anti-seizures are used if the pet requires them to reduce the frequency, duration and severity of the seizures. Unfortunately, medical treatment often only provides a temporary solution and more definitive treatment requires surgery with a highly specialized neurosurgeon. For hydrocephalus that is severe or not responding to medications, ventriculoperitoneal shunting is recommended. A specialized tube is surgically placed under the skin to redirect fluid from the brain to the belly. Shunt placement is a complex procedure that carries considerable risk, but is a long-term solution with a high success rate. Patients continue to require close monitoring and may need subsequent surgeries to replace shunts that have been outgrown, moved, or otherwise failed. The outlook for hydrocephalus is variable. For pets with mild symptoms or pets who respond well to treatments, outcomes can be positive. For severely symptomatic pets, pets who do not respond to treatment, and pets with untreatable underlying causes, the outlook is less optimistic. It is critical to address this condition early to achieve the best chance of recovery. So if you have noticed any of these signs in your dog or cat, that would be a good indication to take your pet to see a veterinary neurologist, such as those at Southeast Veterinary Neurology.